Welcome to another edition of What's Up With Yours Truly, Dr. A. Nathan Young. We're here at our Covington campus, and listen, in just a minute, we're gonna go inside for our teaching part of the service. But before we do that, listen, we wanna know how this message impacts you, how it changes your life, how it inspires you. We'd like to hear how God is using this broadcast in your life. You can let us know that by emailing me, Pastor Nate at myfaithbible.org. You can also mail in a letter or a card or what have you to 1148 North Columbia Street, Covington, Louisiana, 70433. You can message me on Facebook. My name on there is A. Nathan Young. And you can message Faith Bible. Just look for My Faith Bible on Facebook. I can't wait to hear from you. Can't wait to hear how our messages have impacted you and how God's changed your life through what he's doing through us. We love you, enjoy the message. I'll see you right back here in 26 minutes. And welcome to Faith Bible Church. We praise God for you today. Thank you so much. I am Bishop Alfred Young. I've been doing a series entitled, The Seven Habits of Blessed People. And I've been passionate and compelled to study, to find out what are the common habits that really blessed people by God have. And the Lord has given me the answer. One of them is unforgiveness. Truly blessed people learn how to forgive other people. Another one is prayer. Uh, nothing moves the hand of God to bless people like prayer. That's why one of the reasons you may not be as blessed as the Lord wants you to be might be because you're not a person of prayer. It might be that you just, you know, throw up something every now and then. Blessed people have a habit of having a prayer life. Another one is the authority of Scripture. Now, if the Bible is not the authority in your life, if it's just a nice book that you read, if it's something you <clears throat> believe is a good book but that you don't obey and submit to, it's not the authority, the right and wrong in your life, you're not blessed. The reason I know you're not blessed is because unless the Bible is the authority in your life, then you're running and making decisions in your life based on what you think and not what God says. Today's message will test your commitment and obedience to the Word of God more than just about anything else. This teaching today will absolutely bless your life. How do I know? Because I stand before you as evidence, as proof, that if you build this habit un into your life, God will do miraculous, overwhelming, tremendous money things in your life and other things. I'm a witness. Now, a habit of blessed people, in addition to prayer, unforgiveness, and the authority of the scripture, is that they are generous with pastors and preachers. Now, some of y'all, you're going to get off the page right now. Not only in the building, but also in the TV audience. Because you've been taught to do everything for anybody except a preacher. I'm just going to give you, amen, the evidence and the proof that if you develop this habit, that God will bless you tremendously. I'm standing here today on the word of God and proof. I would not have a marriage. Marie and I would be divorced if it were not for my pastor. Because she reached a point in our marriage where she was sick of me. Can I get an amen? <laughs> amen, amen, amen. She just had a done. The person that saved our marriage and family was my pastor. Thad can be a witness. The reason I'm a bishop still in ministry, I would have quit a long time ago if it were not for my pastor. Thad has witnessed me calling him with crazy self-decisions that made sense to me, and he would chew me out. 
my pastor. Matter of fact, I have at times become so discouraged, like a lot of pastors are, that I just would, I could go do something else. But my pastor reminded me that I've been called, not just to make money and have a great life, but to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. People can be discouraging. Pastors are quitting the ministry every day. Because many of you all, you want everything from the preacher, but you refuse to give him anything. Some of you don't even say thank you. Many of you do not pray for him. And others of you, you would never ever consider giving him a dime of what you call your money. It's one of the reasons that you are unblessed. I have a life. I stand before you today. I have a marriage. I have a family. I'm blessed because of my pastor and because of my blessing him. I remember a number of years ago, I was talking about something that I had done for him. And he doesn't need it. He has 7,000 people. But he's my pastor, and it's my blessing. And somebody said to me, and somebody else who blesses him also, he's their pastor, said, I can't believe y'all give him all that money. We looked at each other. I said, you going to hold my coat while I whip him, or I'm going to hold your coat while you whip this Negro? Because <laughs> he didn't understand what God had done through this man in my life. This message today is going to test your commitment and obedience to the Bible. Now, with this message, a lot of people get mad. Some folk, they don't do it. They just won't do it. Others will complain about it. But here's what I've found. I've never, ever, ever heard anybody who tithe complain about tithing. The only people I've ever heard complain about tithing are folk who don't do it. With this message today, those of you who bless and are generous with your pastor and preachers, those of you who are already doing it, you will never complain because you're experiencing the blessing of it already. It's the folk who don't have enough sense or obedience to obey it, who complain. Now, pastors can be like waiters. No, they can be more than that. How many folk in here you've eaten in a restaurant? All right. Now, let me give you a little sidebar teaching. Don't ever, ever, ever go to a restaurant and tell the waiter how saved you are and don't leave a tip. <laughs> waiter walk up, how you doing today? I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> I'm full of Jesus. God is good, hallelujah. And then you leave and leave 50 cent. <laughs> leave $2. Shame on you. I tell my folk, do not leave an invite card to our church and restaurants if you're not going to be generous with the tip because you mess up Jesus' reputation and the church's. And that's a growth thing for me because before I got saved, not only did I not leave a tip, amen, I would go from table to table and steal the tips. <laughs> yeah. But the Lord has grown my life. Many of you refuse to give the pastor what you give even a waiter in a restaurant. The waiter didn't cook the food. Your pastor, amen, put the sermon together. The waiter didn't buy the food. Your pastor went to the Lord and got your spiritual food. The waiter didn't do anything. But yet you have enough care about him or her to give them something, but get mad and talk about giving your pastor or your preacher something. Shame on you. Shame on you. Listening to other foolish people. Listening to your own selfish heart. Here's what the Bible says. 
Elders who do their work well should be respected and paid well, especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. The Bible says that the pastors who work well should be respected and paid well. One of the reasons I didn't want to be a pastor is because so many people committed to starving the preacher. The Bible say pay them well. The Bible say respect them. And then it says, especially those who work hard at both preaching and teaching. Amen. I know y'all got a good preacher here. Can I get a witness? Amen. I know y'all got a great teacher here. Amen. That's what the Bible says. You personally ought to make sure he's paid well. Now, look, I can testify that Dr. A. Nathan Young is a good preacher teacher. How I know? He worked hard at it. Wednesdays, he locked up. Preparing to feed your soul. Fridays, he locked up in there listening to the Lord, praying, and putting the message together, working hard. Saturdays, he locked up again if he doesn't have it. The only way I can get him out on Saturdays, I got to feed him, offer the feeding. <laughs> That's how he got that gut. Hey, Amen. If I want him to come out on Saturdays, I got to go put a bowl of milk on the step and say, yeah, kitty, 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 kitty. But here's my point. I know he works hard. I know he does. And the Bible says, amen, that he should be paid well. Paid well. Now watch this. Do not listen to an accusation against an elder unless it is confirmed by two or three witnesses. That's respect. You should respect the pastor. Amen. Too many of y'all need a check put on you. Because I hear you calling him Nate. Nathan. That ain't respect. In the church where I pastor, amen, there are people of the other race and persuasion. Amen? And in most of their churches, they call their pastors Mike, John, whatever. No, you disrespecting the office. Guess what my people call me? Pastor or bishop. Respect the office. Stop this Nate stuff. That ain't Nate. That's your pastor. The Bible say respect him. The Bible says also do not listen to an accusation. You know the number one thing kill churches? Gossip. Especially gossip about the pastor. The Bible say don't listen to gossip against an elder unless it is confirmed by two or three witnesses. What's it saying? Somebody come to you with some garbage, some foolishness, whatever, some saying about the pastor, you ought to shut him down. If you're going to be biblical, you should ask them, where are your witnesses? Where are your witnesses? And if they say, well, I heard, amen, from Thad, and he say Bill told him, Amen. And then Sister Freddie, you know, that's his grandma. <laughs> she said, and no, no, no. Protect the reputation of your church. Protect the reputation of your pastor. You ought to say, I'm not no dump. You can't dump nothing on me. The Bible says, unless you have two or three, Witnesses don't even listen to it. Years ago, when I was uh, young and we were supporting here at Faith Bible, I was a pastor, a missionary in Africa. I got a call from a member that we should not support this particular missionary anymore. Amen. I would name him, but your pastor got me on TV, so, you know, I got to, I got to cover it up good. I said, why? They said, because his wife just put out that he's sleeping with the teenage girls that they bringing in from Africa, saying everybody is cutting him off. I said, I'm not. They said, why not? He's sleeping with these teenage girls. I said, I'm not cutting him off because I believe the Bible. I follow the Bible. The Bible say two or three witnesses. And this person say, but this is wife. I said, I don't care if it's his mama. I'm following the Bible. 
They destroyed this man's reputation, destroyed his ministry. It got so bad in the incoming weeks, I got on a plane and flew to his home, got with her. She told me, yes, he'd been sleeping with these girls, yada, yada, yada. And so he was coming in. I took her and we went to the airport. As he was coming through customs, he looked and saw me and her and collapsed with hurt. Boom. They got him up, got him through customs. He's weeping and crying, saying, I didn't do this, Pastor, talking to me. She's telling him, yes, you did. You know you did it. We went, got to their home. They, they fussing. Amen. I took them to dinner. On the way out the apartment, somebody hit somebody. Bye, y'all. <laughs> he said, you hit me. She said, no, you hit me. I had planned to spend the night with their home, but after that, I got me a hotel. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out, but I stuck with the Bible. A few weeks later, he called me. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm doing wonderful. I said, how you doing wonderful with all this garbage surrounding you? He said, my wife confessed she was having multiple affairs and lied on me. What the Bible say? Two or three what? Witnesses. Respect him. Respect your church. Don't let nobody talk about your pastor or your church. See, that's a crazy generation. In my generation, hey amen, somebody talk about your mama, what we do, George? Oh, hey, yeah, no, you have to fight. <laughs> hey amen. Respect. Respect. His reputation will be what you let it be. The church's reputation will be what you let it be. Now, how many folk believe we should follow the motto of Jesus? Here's how you be generous with a pastor or and preachers. The Bible says this with Jesus. Soon afterwards, Jesus began a tour of the neighborhood towns and villages, preaching and announcing the good news about the kingdom of God. He took his 12 disciples with him, along with some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's business manager, Susanna, and many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. How was Jesus taken care of? People think because he was Jesus, he just would walk along the way and the disciples would say, Jesus, we hungry. He go, Alakazam. <laughs> Crawfish, crab, steak, mashed potatoes. That is not how that happened. The Bible says, basically, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Susanna, and many others, they were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. What did it just say? The folk who got saved, the folk who got blessed, the folk who got delivered, the folk who got changed, they gave their money. That's why Judas was the treasurer, to support Jesus and the disciples. I'm looking at some folk. You, you've gotten blessed. You've been changed. Everything's happened in your life. You're a different person. And you sit in this church. And yeah, you'll give a little money to the church, but you won't give the pastor nothing. Shame on you. What, what happened? The folk who got blessed gave money to the blesser. What does that look like? I said it in the first service. I'm going to say it again in here. Amen. Folk like Randy. She ought to be blessing the pastor big time. Vic was a deadhead. <laughs> I ain't want nothing to do with Jesus. He want to go arrest somebody. <laughs> but he even shared with me on the way back over here that the Lord used her and her spirituality to bring him closer to the Lord. And then they found the greatest church in the world and they discipled this brother, made him a better husband, made him a better father. He can even stand up and do communion now. Amen. Amen. Dead heads like Thaddeus Michael. Did y'all know that was his name? Bayham. 
Amen. Yvonne ought to be giving big time. She got a better husband. And some of you men, you got better wives because of the pastor's teaching, because of discipleship, because of life groups, because of the environment that's been created in this church. Not to mention your crumb snatching children. Yeah, God did it, but God used your pastor. Amen. He set the environment. He created the atmosphere. He's doing the teaching. He's providing the leadership. And you are the blessing. Some of you, your life, you had no hope. Some of you, you come here, amen, weighed and burned down. Then you hear the word of God, and the Lord lift your burden. You get hope. You get direction. You get faith. Why? Because of the anointing and the spiritual gifting. Not of some preacher, amen, out there somewhere, but because of your pastor. The Bible says you have a personal responsibility. How you know? It's right there in the scripture. This is what it says. They contributed from their own resources. What's that mean? We ain't talking about church treasury money. We're talking about their money. They blessed him. My folk blessed me. Love offering. Love cakes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Love pies. <laughs> Love Amazon cards. Amen. <laughs> hey, man. It's personal. It's personal. The Bible says this. Am I not as free as anyone else? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Jesus our Lord with his own eyes? Isn't it because of my work that you belong to the Lord? What's he saying? Through me you got saved. Through me you have hope. And yeah, some of us say the Lord did it. But the pastor said yes to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Even if others think I'm not an apostle, I certainly am to you. You yourselves are proof that I am the Lord's apostle. What's he saying? You're the proof I'm the man of God. You're the proof the spirit of the Lord is on my life. You're the proof that I'm providing good leadership. You're the proof that I'm changing lives. You're the proof. He said, if you want to see proof of who I am and what I am to you, look in the mirror. Then he says this. This is my answer to those who question my authority. What authority? The authority to get money from you. The authority to be blessed by you. He said, I'm talking now to all of you deadheads who have decided that you don't want to give me anything. You just want to be a parasite, a leech. Suck up all God using me to do and don't do nothing for me. He said, this is what I'm telling you. Don't we have the right to live in your homes and share your meals? Don't we have the right to bring a believing wife with us as well as the other apostles and the Lord's brothers do as Peter does? What was going on? The church at Corinth, they were totally against doing anything for a preacher or a pastor. Matter of fact, Amen. It's kind of like today. Some churches, when you bring in a speaker for the week or a speaker for the day, they make sure they give them as less as possible. What they were saying to preachers back then here was this. Y'all could come through and preach for us, but don't bring your wife because we'll have to feed her too, and we're not going to do it. Thad, Greg, he back there, and Mark will tell you. I am committed and have always been committed to blessing and taking care of preachers. Matter of fact, when we bring preachers in, we find the best hotel around here we can. Because that's the man of God. We tell him, bring your wife. Do all of that. Why? Because I know how people treat preachers. Been there, done that. I was on the revival circuit for years. Amen. Families used to try to put me up in churches as cheap as they could. One year, they put me up in this kid's bedroom on the bottom bunk. He peed on me every night. <laughs> nice motel down the street. Another time, I told him, look, I'm not coming back there and get peed on every night again. <laughs> they put me on a trucker motel. Not the nice one, but the trucker one. Cause they don't want to do nothing for no preacher. All night, guess what I heard? Wah, wah. 
and a couple of times the ladies of the evening knocked on my door. <laughs> Got so bad, my mama can tell you, I called my brother Greg to come get me, and he came and got me, and I commuted every day. Why? Folk don't want to do nothing for the preacher. Folk want the preacher, want to be as cheap as they can with him. Not at Faith Bible. Not under my watch, huh, Dad? People who come in, we treat them like they're supposed to be treated. And I'm sure your pastor does now. Now watch this. Or is it only Barnabas and I who have to work to support ourselves? You know what was going on? They told the Apostle Paul, get a job. We're not doing nothing for you. Get a job. We work, you ought to work. You ain't getting none of our money. Let me ask you this question. How many of you would like to go to a doctor and on his wall, instead of a doctor's certificate, he got a plumbing certificate? <laughs> He's a licensed master plumber. <laughs> and you ask him, Doc, you a plumber too? He say, no, I'm a master plumber. I just do doctrine on the side. <laughs> and then he say, it's all the same thing. You're just putting stuff together. <laughs> they said, get a job. So at car rent, he was a tent maker. This is what he says. What soldier has to pay his own expenses? Come on, let's vote. How many of you all would go to war if the government told you you got to buy your own bullets? Any takers on that? What if they told you they want you to go fight their war, but you got to buy your own tank? What about all of the people who expect the pastor to show up at the hospital, to show up at the funeral, to show up at their house and be on time with everything, but don't want to buy them a car? You tell them, buy your own tank. Buy your own books. Buy your own all. Buy your own clothes. And you know if he come in there, hey man, and he's not GQ like me, hallelujah. <laughs> Y'all gonna be mad. What soldier has to pay his own expenses? What farmer plants a vineyard and doesn't have the right to eat of some of his fruit? How many folk in here you plant a garden and then other folk tell you you can't have any? How many folk you will plant a garden and they tell you you can only have one row of it? Your garden. You planted it. What shepherd cares for a flock of sheep and isn't allowed to drink some of the milk? Am I merely expressing a human opinion or does the law say the same thing? For the law of Moses says you must not muzzle an ox to keep it from eating as it treads out the grain. Was God thinking only about oxen when he said this? What was going on? The Old Testament farmers, they noticed that their ox that were plowing in the field would reach up and bite off an ear of corn. So they decided, we're going to shut that down. That ox is going to eat what we say, when we say, how we say, at the time we say. So they put muzzles on them so that they could not eat while they plowed. God got upset 